fall or talk right now. I never did talk to her yesterday, but I did talk to her husband. And Jennifer wanted to see if we could maybe get some meals for uh, her for uh, maybe a week or so for them. And uh, although she can't fall or eat, um, and I talked to Tyrell, and it sounds like he's got 24 hour on call thing. So Jennifer suggested we might do something a little different, and maybe if um, uh, we could take some donations, a little donations, and, and uh, maybe go and get some frozen food, put microwave food for them, or even maybe uh, have a baby's car or something to help them out. For the okay, okay. So I'll be in the back after church. Okay. That'd be good. So in the back after church, um, you see Joanna, then we'll talk about that after church. That'd be great. Okay. Let's keep her in our prayers then. And let's also keep um, the Anderson family in our prayers out in Soden. They have a seventh grader? Eighth grader that just found out he has a brain tumor. And he's heading off to Seattle real soon. So uh, Anderson is the, that's the, the family. So um, Dan Anderson Construction, keep him in your prayers. So for sure. All right, little ones, come forth. All right, come on up. The few, the proud, the little marines. Come on up. All right. Okay. Now, there's lots, a lot of people getting sick, so don't you guys be sucking off anybody's drinks downstairs, okay? <laughs> don't, keep, don't keep your lips off other people's drinks, especially mine. All right? Because I know a lot of you guys have been sick and everything. All right. All right, let's pray, and then we'll send you guys downstairs, okay? Lord, we just ask you to be with uh, the kids downstairs, Lord. Bless them, bless the teachers. God, we thank you for them, and we thank you that they are such a blessing to us, Lord Jesus. And thank you for giving them to us, Lord, to train them and teach them and raise them up, Lord, to be followers of Christ. So, Lord, just be with them today. In your blessed name we pray. Amen. All right. Amen. All right, we're going to continue with our worship, and we have communion today, and uh, so we just want you to get in that frame of mind, of uh, just get ready to bless the Lord this morning, and, and uh, be prepared to do communion, we're going to just continue on here. this morning. Yeah. 
Jesus, we just come to the foot of the cross this morning. Lord, as we prepare to do communion, we pray, God, God, that we would clean ourselves, Lord, before you, God, that we would ask for forgiveness, God, for those things needed. Lord, we pray that we would reach out to you, God, and let you touch our heart this morning. As we do communion, as we hear the word that Pastor Nick brings, we just ask, God, that you prepare our hearts, Lord, as we worship you this morning, Jesus. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you for being amongst us, Lord Jesus. We bless your name.
Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is blessed when the saints come together to sing. Amen? He says we'll enter his gates and come into his courts with praise and thanksgiving. Amen? I'm going to have our ushers prepare to ush, if you would, so we can uh, receive our morning offering. And then I'll have Nick come up. Brother Nick. So we just, uh, aren't you thankful today that the Lord takes care of you? I mean, He just takes care of you. He meets your needs. He gives you what you need when you need it. So be happy today about that. Be happy you're healthy too. Amen. All right, let's pray. Jesus, we just thank you for this day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it, God. Thank you for your praise and your worship. Thank you for the music, God, that you put in our hearts. We just are blessed, God. We're blessed to be able to come and sing to you, Lord. And so we just pray today that you would prepare our hearts, God, to hear your word and to, to take communion. And Father, we thank you for all that you give us and take care of us in this church, Lord, and that you meet our needs. And in your name we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. And so uh, the junior high kids can go ahead and vamoose. I think they already have. So Nick, come on up. All right. Sing about the name of Jesus. There's no other name is there than the name of Jesus. Uh, I've been informed that Lewis, his mother, died, and we need to let's lift him up. Let's just go to the Lord in prayer and and and, and bring the Comforter to his life. Father, we just thank you this morning in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for our brother Lewis, Lord, Lord, and all that things he's been through. Lord God, we still a great tremendous witness for you. Lord, I thank you, God, that you sent us back and the Comforter to to bring us through valleys that we go through. And God, we right now, we would just pray that your comforter, God, would touch Lewis from the top of his head at the bottom of his feet, God, that you would comfort him through this, Lord God. There's not, there, when we go through these times, there's no way of being removed from him, Lord, but we know that you can be there in the midst to take us through him. Father, you promised when you left, Lord Jesus, that you would never leave us, you would never forsake us, you wouldn't leave us orphans, you would send back a comforter to live and dwell in us, Lord. So we just ask, God, would you just touch him right now and his other family members, the grandsons, the granddaughters, other people involved, God, would you just come in a mighty way and give them comfort through this. We just honor you and praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, uh, Bill called me, or he called me, he texted me Wednesday and asked me if I could come and give a message. And I always reply when somebody asks me if I want to talk about Jesus. I say, well, just a minute, let me check my heartbeat. And yeah, it's beating. <laughs> so I, I told him, of course, that I would come and share a message with you. Now, uh, I'm busy right now. Just get real quick, get a little clip in, because I'm right now starting a three-day revival at the Roxy. I don't know if you don't know me. I bought the Roxy, and we're going to have a three-day revival we call Embracing Grace. It starts tonight at 6.30. If you're not doing anything, I'd invite you to come. It's tonight, tomorrow night, and the next night. So um, I've been really seeking the Lord, pressing in for, for messages for this. And when Bill got a text, I got home, and I thought, well, what should I do instantly? The Holy Spirit said to preach, because that's who I am. I love, I love preaching about my Savior. I really do. But, I, but what I did, I'll be honest with you, what I did is I thought, I'll just grab an old sermon and I'll just kind of make it new and I'll come and share it with you because you've never heard it. <laughs> but you know, I just went Thursday after, Thursday morning to the Roxy and I went up into my, uh, kind of my prayer room and I started going through this message and the Holy Spirit said, no, no, wait a minute. He said, that's, don't try to make a new message out of an old message. You know, it might be new to them, but it's, you're, you're trying to make one of your old messages into a new message. And I, like Pastor Buzz, we talk about it all the time. God, when he speaks to me, he wants me to give new messages, not just for you, but for me. And that is kind of ironic, really, or kind of God's timing that just last Sunday I went to Abundant Life and there was an evangelist from Texas that came up. 
And he was speaking, and while he was speaking, he talked about going through a town, and he saw this church, and it had 212 church on it. He thought, 212 church? What is that? So he stopped and he inquired. And it was a church that wanted to be, the, the, the people there were trying to be at 212 degrees. They wanted to be 212 degree Christians. That's the boiling point for water. So that's the name of the church was 212. So as I got to thinking about this, and I threw this old message that I was going to make new, and I started thinking about, well, I've been thinking about this week, because every time that Buzz knows this, when you, when you hear things like that, it starts thinking, well, there's a message here. There's a message there somewhere. So I started thinking about that, and I got a message for you about a 212 church. Uh, we're looking at boiling. Now, all, how many of you know that God doesn't want us to be lukewarm? He really doesn't want us to be lukewarm. Never, ever, does anybody here like lukewarm coffee? I hate lukewarm coffee. Give it to me hot. Some of the ice coffee, I don't know about that either. But I don't want it lukewarm. Anything that's lukewarm, I just spew it out. And you know, that's kind of what Jesus said when he, the, the seven uh, letters to the churches, and to the church of the Laodiceans, he said this in, in Revelation chapter 3, verse 16. He says, so then because you were lukewarm and neither cold or hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Now, that's a pretty gross way of saying it. You could put it in a gross way. He says, you, you guys make me want to puke. <laughs> you're, you're lukewarm. Let's, let's, get, let's get some fire going here. I don't want you being lukewarm. Now, how does God raise the temperature in our life? I'll tell you how. It's the thing a lot of people miss. The Holy Spirit in your life and my life is the one that will heat our thermostat. He's the one that will bring it up. If we obey, we submit, we give in to the, the life that lives in you and me as Christians... And we seek him, and we really, and we're feeding him, and we're praying to him. He's going to turn up the heat in your life, in my life. And we, he wants us to get to a point where we steam. <laughs> you know, because when there's steam, there's power. There's power to do something. He wants to go out and steamroll the world with his message of the gospel, the saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as I thought about this this getting to a boiling point. How the Holy Spirit turn up the thermostat. He'll never turn it down to cold. He'll always turn it up to hot. And I thought about, remember the old days, the old steam engine going down the tracks? And they're moving down the track. They're pulling tankers and everything with them. And we look at the big black smoke rolling out of the smokestack. And we say, man, look at that smoke bellowing out of there. Well, it's not the smoke that's bringing that train down the track. There's a couple guys down below, and they're throwing coal into the firebox. And the firebox is heating up water. And the water is, is steaming to a boil, and it's steaming. And that steam is producing power. And it's the power of that steam that's moving that engine down the track. That's what God wants us. He wants to give us a little steam to move us down the track. Now... Now, I'm sure those who are familiar with, with Peter, good old Peter, I love Peter, but I'll put my foot in my mouth, Peter. You know, he can say a lot you want about him, but Peter walked on water, didn't he? <laughs> anyway, let's go to Peter. Let's look at this guy who said, Jesus, I'll die with you. I'll, I'll just give up my life for you. And, and we know that that wasn't true, and so did Jesus. He said, Peter, i got to tell you, before this day's over, before the grocery crop grows once, you're going to deny me three times. Oh, no, 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 no. But he did, didn't he? Even with cursing, he denied Jesus. And then when he was crucified, they were all scattered and they all hid. They were scared to death. Even when, when Jesus appeared to them in that room, they're hiding out. They're scared. Well, what happened here? What happened now? Because we fast forward here to the day of Pentecost. What happened on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit would come back to Peter and would get him just a little bit fired up, if you want to speak. So he got to a point where, where he, was, he, was ready to, he was ready to steamroll the world. He steamrolled 3,000 people. We're going to read the story right here. He steam cleaned them, if you will, because he had the power, he had the heat, he had the fire of the Holy Spirit to speak to these people. And I want to read it to you. You can open your Bibles to chapter, uh, it's in chapter 2. Uh, or three, I'm sorry. No, it is. It's in two. Starting in verse 22. Chapter 2, verse 22. And let's read about Peter. What happened to Peter and the difference between before he got some fire, before he got steamed up, and after. We already know before he was scared to death. He denied Jesus. He was, he was going the other direction. Now let's get into the book. The Gospel. The book of Acts, I'm sorry. The book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 22. Good question. Acts 22. And let's see what happens here. 
Starting at verse 22, he says, Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs which God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves also know, him being delivered by the determined purpose and foreknowledge of God, you have taken by lawless hands and have crucified and put him to death. Here's how it started out. On the day of Pentecost, what did Peter start preaching to get the people's attention? He started preaching the gospel. That's what he's preaching right here because you, he said to the people, this, this Jesus, you crucified him. You killed him. Okay? That's the first part of the gospel that Jesus would come and he would be crucified for the sin of the world. Now go on to verse 24. It says, Whom God raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be held by it. Okay, there he is. He came. You killed him. You crucified him. He was buried. And God raised him from the dead. That is the good news. That's the good news for you and I, that Jesus come to pay the penalty for your sin and my sin. And he, was, and he rose from the dead. The resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ is crucial. But this is the gospel that he's preaching to these people right now. And if you go to verse 33, it says, Therefore, being exalted to the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he poured out that now which you now see. So he's, he's continuing with the gospel. See, that's the, the death, the burial, the, the, the resurrection, the ascension, and now the Holy Spirit's come back to live in you and to live in me as we ask him into our life. And down in verse 36 is where it starts happening. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. There it is, second time. Second time he's talking to the people. You know, he could be talking to you, he could be talking to me. You crucified him. You killed him. He died for your sin. And what happened as a result? See, Peter's steamed up right now. He's under fire. The Holy Spirit come down into him he, with tongues of fire. And he's steaming, man. He's given a powerful message. Just said he stood, he stood up boldly. He wasn't afraid to preach anymore. And what I want you to see is he's preaching the gospel. And I believe the church needs to get back to preaching the gospel. That's just where I am right now as an evangelist. He, we need to get back to preaching the gospel. Because what happened as a result of preaching Jesus Christ and him crucified? Jesus said, if I be high and lifted up, I will draw all people into myself. What happens? Well, here's what they say. When they, second time when he told them that they killed him. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. And said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said to them, repent and one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is to you, to your children, to all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call. And with many other words he testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized, and that day about 3,000 souls came, was added to them, came to the Lord. He steamrolled 3,000 souls, and how did he do it? Hear this, how did he do it? Did he do it with, well, I'm going to make you rich. I'm going to make you healthy. I'm going to make you prosper. Just, no, he's, he's steamrolled them with the truth of the gospel. And it cut him to the heart. We need to get back to understanding. You know, there's a lot of times we decide, we think, well, what can I do for the Lord? i got to do this. i got to do that. And a lot of times we don't really comprehend and understand what he did for us. That when we're going we're gonna to enter into that in a bit, we're going to enter into this communion. We're going to remember him and what he would do for us. But we remember he steamrolled them with the gospel, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. I love that example right there of someone who got steamed up. You might say the first church was a result of a steam engine, Peter, because that's when the church began. That's when the church started out and then they, they went forward. Every one of the apostles now or the, the disciples of Jesus had been given this power inside to go out and be martyrs, to be witnesses for him because they, he'd come back on the day of Pentecost just like he said he would. I will give you power to be witnesses for me. Now, there's another story. I want to just flip over to the book of Acts and, and to verse to chapter 16. And let's look at let's look at another interesting story. Chapter 16, starting in verse 20. This is when Paul and Silas were put into prison. You know, they were out doing their good works, and there was this diviner. 
she was make, causing him all kinds of trouble. So uh, Paul got kind of ticked off one day. He just cast a demon out of her. And, and it ticked the people off because they were making money off of this lady. And so they, they come against him and they put him in prison. And let's read this story. Let's read in, in, in verse 20 in, in chapter um, 16. And they brought them to the magistrates and said, These men being Jews exceedingly trouble our city, and they teach custom which are not lawful for us, being Romans to receive or observe. Then the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. One of the many times that we know the Apostle Paul was beaten with rods. Next time we think about how we're persecuted, or poor means about being persecuted. Think about being beaten with a rod for what you believe. And when they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. 